Okay, we're back out front of the solar cabin now. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the things that are on the outside of the cabin that make this system work. I've already explained that those are solar panels up there. How solar panels work is they collect the sun's rays, convert it into DC, direct current energy, uh, which is different from what a general grid house works on, which is AC power, alternating current. Uh, DC power can be used to run almost anything that AC power can be used to run, and DC power can be converted into AC power for running all appliances and anything that you would generally have in a regular grid home. Uh, the solar panel system that I have up there is 350 watts. Uh, it cost me a little under $3,000 for the entire system. I started with a smaller system for about under $1,000 and just a couple of panels, and I've expanded just enough to take care of my electrical needs. That's what powers my entire cabin right there, that and the combination of a generator, a small generator that I use for operating tools and, stu and stuff like that. I'll show you the whole system as it works. Up there are electrical wires that connect to the panels. They come down under the wall on the front porch. Wires just come down and are connected to this little unit right here, which is called a power controller. What the power controller does is it monitors the panels up there to see if there's power coming in so it doesn't drain your batteries back. Uh, it also regulates the flow of the electricity so it goes into the batteries at a good constant rate so that it doesn't overcharge the batteries or it doesn't cause them to sulfur up. This little power controller here is made by Hasco. I don't know if they still make them or not. You can buy all kinds of different brands. Uh, you can get expensive ones. This one is made to handle up to 370 watts. My system is 350 watts, so it takes care of all of my needs. Very basic, two little bolts and a side bolt. All you do is run the power cable, the positive cable into one side of it. Uh, the negative cable goes down to the batteries, and then there's a negative cable that comes from the batteries up to the power controller. It has some idiot lights on it, which are really good uh, to have on a controller, which simply tells you if it's charging, if it's discharged, and what's going on with the panels. You quick look at them, and it tells you exactly what's going on. Those wires, and you can see there's a few of them because I have uh, several panels up on the roof so those have to come down they connect all back into each other the next part of that unit is the batteries I keep my batteries in a wood box on my porch for a number of reasons batteries work better when they're kept cool in the summer and warm in the winter having them outside in a shaded box allows me to keep them cool in the summer in the winter time I stuff that box full of insulation that keeps them a little bit warmer in the summer because ga batteries put off uh, dangerous gas you don't want to have those inside a shed or a house so we keep them inside a wooden box and that way they're protected from the weather Inside the box are my batteries. In this case, what I have right now is two deep cycle Trojan T105 batteries available at just about any place that sells batteries. I like the Trojan T105s. They last a bit longer. They can handle a little bit deeper drain. Uh, they seem to just be a better battery. You could also do 6 volt batteries if you want. These are 12 volt batteries. My entire system set up to run off 12 volt. My panels are all 12 volt. So that seems to work better for me. Uh, basic connections. You have some big heavy cables in between the batteries. Those are necessary because of the more smaller cables you have, the more restriction you have to power. Just kind of like a, a water hose. You don't want to have the power restricted. So you want to use good heavy-duty cables, basic cable connections, and the batteries from there, there's wires that run off back up to the house that provides direct DC current because I use DC for some of my appliances and lights on the inside. And then there is a power cord that goes from there over to this next little unit. That's a basic inverter. And inverters, are you can purchase them just about anywhere. There's actually two inverters there. I just have the one on the bottom working. It's a 400-watt uh, inverter made by Black & Decker. I think I paid $60 for it. Uh, you can buy expensive inverters, but generally for a small cabin like this, the inexpensive inverter, 400 watts, will handle just about everything you need. It has a switch on it that uh, allows you to turn it on and off. It also has an idiot light to tell you if it's working, and it will beep at you if, if the power runs down telling you, hey, you've used up your battery power, it's time to shut me off. The inverter converts the power from DC directly to AC current, so using the inverter is what you would need to do if you want to run AC appliances in your cabin. Not necessary, but it's a good idea because most, it's easier to find AC appliances, and since it's converted over, there's very little loss in the power. So that is the inverter. The inverter also has a fuse on the back side of it, which gives you extra protection in case uh, for some reason you had a short or something like that in your line, the inverter would automatically fuse out, uh, cutting off the power, and so there's not much chance of either being electrocuted or starting a fire that way. 
The other little thing there you can see with the idiot lights is simply a power monitor that I attached to it. I think I paid five dollars for this for at Radio Shack. You can see the lights on it are green. That shows that my ba my batteries are charged up. It's only noon here, and in just about four or five hours of sunlight, my batteries are completely charged up. I could add additional batteries. I could put as many as four or five batteries on this system if I wanted to. I've decided to just go with two batteries, which was enough to get me power throughout a night and still keep everything running uh, without the expense of buying additional batteries. But you could add additional batteries to a system as large as mine. The idiot lights also tell me as the batteries drain down if I'm starting to get low on power. So I know I can either start switching stuff off or if there's a problem with my system in case uh, something's come loose, I can go and check and find out where that is. This, this is a good thing to have in addition to uh, your inverter, your power controller, your battery, and your panels. Uh, it's a good idea to have one of these little systems that just kind of tells you what everything is going on. That is a basic solar electric system. The panels, the power controller, the inverter, and a good monitor is all you really need to operate all the electrical systems in your house. This provides enough power to operate all the in all the stuff that I have inside my house, which I will show you. It also uh, provides power for a water pump, TVs, laptop computer, lights, and all the gadgets and, and things that I keep inside the house. And I'll, I'll explain those when we get inside. The other component that isn't required but is a good idea is a generator. I keep my generator also out on the porch and near my battery box, and I'll uncover it here. This is a cheap 1500 watt generator. Uh, it's enough to power all my power tools. It will also, if necessary, <clears throat> it can be used to run a microwave. Uh, you can use it to run a, a washing machine or anything like that. I think I paid about $200 for this unit brand new. It operates on gas. Uh, it will run about four hours on a gallon of gas, so you get a lot of operating time for not a lot of money. The other thing that this does is that it, during when this is running, uh, it also feeds back additional power into the battery bank. By having the additional power go in there, if I happen to be uh, low on watts in my batteries for whatever reason, maybe I had a day where I didn't get a lot of sunshine, when I'm running my power tools outside during the daytime, all the additional power goes into my battery bank and keeps my batteries charged up. That's an excellent idea and a good way to keep your batteries charged up if you have a small system. Larger systems, generally the battery banks are larger and you don't have to have a generator at all. But a generator is nice to have if you want to run higher watt equipment, especially power tools and things like that, like I do. My workshop and shed over here, which I just recently built and I'm still finishing up. That's a workshop where I have all my power tools and everything. My electricity runs into there so I can run all my power tools even in the winter time. Also in there is, will be my washer and dryer, which will also run off the, the generator. Since I only wash clothes, I'm just a single guy. I only have to wash clothes once a week. It doesn't take that much and doesn't cost that much to run the generator to run my washing machine, and that takes care of all my needs. That's pretty much the basic system on the outside. Now we'll go on the inside of the cabin, and I'm going to show you exactly what a small solar system can run and how the interior of the cabin works.